Hey guys, welcome back to Vanishing Gates. As always, I'm your host, Jay, with my co-host. Jack, hey, everyone. And joining us again is our buddy, Seth. Hey, how's it going? And uh, tonight, we're going to talk about, uh, well, we're going to try to make this episode a little more coherent than the last one. Good luck doing that, though. Uh, Cigar of the Week, we've joined Jack on this... Um, Cigar of the, La the Gloria show for now. Cubana. Yeah, that's right. We're going to change it from Cigar of the Week to Cigar of the Show because we're going to probably do more than one show a week because, you know, yeah, that may be you good. guys can't get enough of Jay. I, I think they can't get enough of Jack. <laughs> Don't get enough Jack. <laughs> <laughs> unless, you're, unless you're a vodka get person. So this, this, this cigar we're doing is La Gloria Cubana Series R Esteli. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're a decent cigar. I'm really enjoying it. It's a good um, one. This is the first time I've had it myself, and uh, it's very uh, it's very calming. It didn't, it really didn't insult my palate. I was eating pizza, and it did not insult my palate. Yeah, we had a pizza, and it was pretty good. Yeah. And we had jalapeno poppers. That was amazing. Yeah. And, uh, I, think that was I don't know, man. Episode. We were... F- we're pre-recording these. Like, they don't know that yet. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> that's why we're already kind of tossed, because we've been recording in tandem... This is the show in the prior. So Sorry. anyhow, uh, Jack has uh, a topic he wants to go off on tonight, and then we're going to talk about something else as well. If we can get into Jack's topic, that'd be good. All right, we're going to talk about the Green Children of Woolpit. This is Woolpit in Suffolk, England. Wait, the Green Suffolk. Children of Tom Woolpat? Oh God, <laughs> we're going to get sued if you say that Tom Woolpat had. Just you just said <laughs> these things. Shut up. <laughs> Suffolk, England. All right, go for it. England, so, London, England. These two children, this is 12th century England, um, uh, believed to be the reign of King Stephen. Two children appeared in, or appeared in the, reportedly, I should say, reportedly appeared in the town of, um, of Woolpit in Suffolk. Woolpit. Well, that sounds they, like were, they were completely normal, too. except for the fact that they happened to have um, green-tinted skin. Their skin was, you know, slightly green. I don't know how green. There's obviously not going to be pictures in the 12th century. <laughs> layers of green you can slather on like you're from different, New Jersey? Different shades. Anyway, so it's like change they, of they orange in the Jersey they were, It was a brother and sister, and they didn't um, they didn't speak any language that people could understand. It was it was an unknown language, even to this day. I guess it's still unknown. Um, but they would only eat um, beans, like which green is beans? which is believed where the yeah or, or, yeah like green beans or bean pods. So like pod food. So essentially, only where that's where they probably got the green tinting from was mm. that specific thing. Like if all you eat too many carrots, you'll turn orange. All the exactly. chlorophyll. Yeah, like they probably. And it got in their blood and turned their skin green. Yeah. So if you're a vegan and you have green skin and can prove that this is right, please email us at vanishinggates with two G's at gmail.com and let us know how that's working out for you. And if you're from self look, please correct me. Let me know what's going on there. Because they, they may have been debunked. It may have been just, you know, they may just be considered a laughable, stupid story that people told once. And if you were still alive and you witnessed these kids back in, what, 18, something yes. or another? Yes, it's, it's like everything. If you could tell me about the we birth of the We want you on the show to tell us what you did to survive for so fucking long. <laughs> yeah, give us your secrets. <laughs> so this brother, this brother and sister, they, um, they would only eat the green beans. And it, it took a while, but eventually they got them to eat other foods and they lost their green pallor. Well, they finally decided to baptize them, and after a little while, the, the brother grew sick, and then he passed away, whereas the girl, um, she actually wound, uh, wound up surviving and, you know, thriving. Apparently, she was very, um, <clears throat> rather loose and wanton, so she probably wore pants, so they thought she was a whore. No, I no, assume that's, that's what it was. That's not what that means. <laughs> she's rather loose, she's wearing, she's wearing pants, that bitch. Uh, that's not okay. Is that how we're doing this now? Yes, that's how we're doing this. <laughs> and after she learned to speak English, she explained that her and her brother from a, were from a subterranean land full of green people called St. Martin's Land. Pretty sure St. Martin's is in the Caribbean. Well, maybe that's where it's at. Maybe they were underground uh, in It's St. not Martin's subterranean. Caribbean. It's an island. How the fuck did they get from North America? Maybe there's subterranean tunnels on the island, okay? That go under the ocean? Under the there, are, there are literally the Shanghai, there are Shanghai tunnels under our town, so don't give me that there couldn't be. Yeah, but they don't go from here to fucking Suffolk, England. You know they find cities underground all the time? No, they don't. Yes, we, they do. we built cities on top of cities. They find... A, Name one. I, I can't. Exactly. Off the top of my head. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> now, I do know this. Uh, St. Louis, dick. Missouri, there is an ancient <laughs> Indian city there. Native American, whatever you want to call it. I'm pretty sure it was Aztec, isn't it? Something like that. It was those. Uh, it was mound building or um, like the the pyramid style building, mound building yeah. civilization. And yeah. It was huge, and the idea they're discovering now. They were trying to build a roadway or something through it, and they discovered that there was a city, huge ancient city under there that should never have been there. 
under St. Louis, Missouri. I think that's happened a couple times. Like, there's just, they, they run, like, I, when I said all the time, I'm saying that, like, actually, there could be Chicago, I think there's, like, Illinois. three or four of them. And they're just these big-ass cities that are abandoned that they don't know where they came from or who made them. There's no one there. There's no bones. It looked like they were abandoned overnight, the vast Long majority ago, of them. in ancient times, before written history, there were a group of people. No one knew who they were or where they came from. So what do you think about the fact that they could have they, that they could come from this St. Martin's land? It, not talking about the island more than likely. The well, St. Martin's land. Okay, so the, what, what strikes me as weird, first of all, is the story, and this is what makes me question it, because I'm sure your skin can... I, we know people that are around nickel or around uh, fucking silver can actually... Their skin will change color. If yeah. you ingest too much of it, your skin will actually start turning blue. So I, that, that part isn't far-fetched. No. But the idea... And we know that people in New Jersey turn very orange for some inexplicable reason tanning booths <coughs> and um <coughs> Jersey Shore <coughs> tanning booths sounds like a horrible cough there <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, 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 New Jersey <laughs> <The> situation <coughs> sneaky um so that's not the, the weird part for me the weird part is that the, the girl refers to when she learns English she refers to a place she comes from as St. Martin's Land and yeah, this is weird right here's the thing that's, that's a real like when you go to a place it's called St. Something it's named after a particular saint usually a Catholic saint and they named the place after it. Like, north of us is a town called McKinleyville, named for President McKinley. You know, yeah. so a lot of these places get their names from people that live. Well, this person, this girl, and this boy who come from a place, subterranean, would give it a, the na a Catholic proper name. This doesn't sound legitimate to me. Well, well I mean, what if there was somebody, what if there is somebody, like, on this, you know, island or this land area that, you know, within the town itself was their... Own specific Their guide city. person, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe I mean, a person, like, yeah, maybe that's yeah. a translation that came from it. They, they just had to give it a name, and because of how they were being brought up by these villagers, that's what they thought was the proper way to name it. Even though they probably had a different name that doesn't have a translation, maybe. Right. Essentially, yeah, they probably just they they, they dubbed it themselves essentially because well, they couldn't understand. Like she couldn't probably find a proper translation for what the name of the person was, and she recognized that they were calling things by saying. Is there any just, other like description of them? Were they very hairy? Could they have been seven foot tall uh, and walk on all fours sometimes? Because that could be the subterranean Bigfoot connection. It might be. Because I don't think. Uh, I kind of mean that in a serious, semi-serious way because the the idea, the, the thing about Bigfoot, you know, who's to say it's really covered in hair and said maybe it's just green is why it blends in. Well, it's his surroundings. And it's hairy because it doesn't have a razor. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it could be. Could that's, be. I so mean, maybe it's a, a people of some It could be the damn Sam Squanch. Sam Squanch? Wait, hold on. So are you saying that, like, people that are, like, seven foot? Because we have actually have, you know, pe pe people... I had a grand uncle who was seven foot two. Exactly. Died, yeah. so. I mean, just... I have a brother who's six foot eight. So, I mean, <laughs> if he uh, if he didn't have a razor, I mean, could he be... Good? Bigfoot. If you grew enough hair, I guess. Yeah. yeah. There are people. Uh, I mean, Jack is who... wearing a wool sweater all the time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's blonde, so you can't see it. <laughs> Speaking of which, I need my other shirt. Yeah. Big guy <laughs> That's a long shirt. story. At least you got the real California cheese. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> you are the, the the big cheese. <laughs> Wash a, that. What a cheese head. Uh, I think it's Wisconsin, isn't it? Yeah, it's Wisconsin for yeah, sure. We don't we don't do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so back to your green kids. Essentially, th there's there's not a lot about them. This is this is the base knowledge that people have. There was a book written about them. I fucking I don't even know. I don't remember what it was called, but I don't know exactly what what the hell. It's called the Green Children. Written You've in been pimping the story at me for over a week, and you don't have any information beside one story you read online. That's the kind of quality. That is the kind of quality. It's the same mom. That's the kind of quality story <laughs> that you can expect from us here at Vanishing Gates. That's the, this is the oh, quality we you give thought You thought the last show was a shit show. We're gonna be more organized on this one, but still, we're not gonna come with you. Come at you with facts. So, no. if you guys have any information on these green kids, though, please let us know. Like, uh, I'm sure that we're just not exhausting all of the available resources because we don't get a lot of time to study these. And Jack does, but he leaves all his notes. At his house. I, I do that. I do so, that, unfortunately. And that's why he's the co-host. That's, that's fine. And the editor, so we got to be careful because he could just turn our voices into ducks or something. <laughs> that really would be amazing. I mean, could you imagine just like a Daffy Duck segment? Oh, God, no. <laughs> we should have him tell the story as Richard Nixon. <laughs> the green kids of Wopat. Yeah, so he does this impression of Richard Nixon. It's really just an impression of someone doing an impression. Of <laughs> oh, I yeah. am not a crook. Oh, God. Or a voice actor. So, <laughs> these green kids show up in this village, 
they talk about being from some some subterranean area. Well, and they're green. So what if maybe like the lizard people that people think about are just really people that are subterranean and green skin instead of actual lizard people? You know, that could be. I mean, this could actually tie into, you know, the reality of the situation, which means there could be people who lived in an underground society at the well, time. We, we know for a fact that there are people that do and have lived in caves. Yeah. And uh, they, so, they make they make yeah. giant cities underneath in these caves. Yeah. They make I mean, huge fucking cities. Oh, like, yeah. There's places in, in America where there's cities carved into great fissures of rock. Yeah. And, and is, it, is it Grand Canyon maybe has one or something? I know uh, there's, there's I one of those one big, those. big holes in the ground that we have in America. I'm not sure. I don't know. <laughs> big holes in the ground. <laughs> it's a big fucking <laughs> hole in the ground. fucking know. science. We <laughs> lost it. <laughs> we <laughs> lost a giant hole in the ground. We don't know. Uh, we don't know where it went. We don't know who they were, where they came from. But there's a big hole. <laughs> I gotta stop the mystery science theater jokes. All right, so green kids ate lots of greens. I wonder if that's like some kind of weird cannibalistic tribe. <laughs> Maybe they're partially pop. Oh, think about it, though. There was that story about Buddha, who he and his family, his wife and daughter, were being pursued into this. They went to this forest where the pods looked like people, and they looked so much like beautiful women that they sprouted up when the assailants were coming through and actually would, like, seduce the, the assailants and then kill them. That is the weirdest fucking... That is legitimately one of the weirdest... You're insulting right? Buddhists now. The weirdest... Come on. It's, it's part I of think folklore. Indian people know that their religion is strange. You, you and Japanese, it, so, of course. But. Oh, my God. Japanese are not all Buddhists. And these are all... Oh, my they God. They predominantly come from Japan and No, India. no, they don't. They don't? No. They say they do. No, no. Buddhism don't is, listen to Jay. He doesn't know shit. Buddhism is, Buddhism is like mainland Buddhism. China, and Japan's an island off the coast of Eurasia. And China and, and, Why and Tibet and that are, that's like the main Buddhist area. Even, the, even though Buddha came from India, the religion was based on the Orient, in the Orient. I did not know that part. Anyways. I'm probably wrong, but I don't think so. The, the point is, is that... I just know that story, though, with the, the pod people that came down and, and killed the assailant that would be attacking Buddha. Maybe it's maybe this is a group of people that come from trees, like almost like ants, but not actually trees. You yeah, know what I mean? Could be. Because there mean, are stories of plants that become living entities. I mean, we know plants are alive. Got, they, he could have gotten sick because the thing is, it's like what people don't realize, when you go from being like... Um, if you ever seen certain movies where they talk about eating fast food all of a sudden after becoming vegan after three years, your body doesn't acclimate properly to the the, the nutrients and the and the iron that comes from meat. I think, you don't just all of a sudden you're not able to digest meat properly. Uh, after I think, being I think eating what happens when fat. you become a vegan, you just shit out all the good bacteria in your stomach, uh, and then when you go to eat meat, you don't have protection against what you've already been used to your whole well, life. Well, that's what I'm saying. Essentially, when the little like boy after, died was... After I had my stomach surgery... Able to survive. Like, I used to never get sick, and then I had my stomach surgery, and they had to flush my stomach because they did a, a, an endoscope surgery to pull pal uh, pu um, little This is going to be a very interesting description. Well, they, they pulled polyps out of me, and the polyps that had formed inside of my, my intestines, and what they did was they flushed all the bacteria out of my stomach, and so I started getting sick a lot more. I had never, I never really got sick before that. Like, yeah. The only time I got sick before that, that I can remember is right after I got a fucking flu shot. I got sick as fuck for like a month. But that's not right after I got a flu shot. I'm thinking the little boy not having anything that no bacteria that could fight or yeah or no break that's down what that's probably what happens was, like he basically well, just died. Well, okay, think about what happened with the Native Americans like and they talk about like the smallpox smallpox blanket and I'm not trying to make light of this at all but what happened was the immune systems the immunities weren't the same they weren't built up because they weren't around it. Well, the, that, that was the, that's the general consensus. Well, that that's like the, the that didn't know what was happening. That's like the War of the Worlds thing when you watch that Tom Cruise movie. All well, the all aliens died, died yeah, just suddenly just up and died because and they weren't used to our bacteria and that's, diseases. That's, that's common knowledge. The problem that's totally that. legit because if you think about it, like, okay, think about micro microbiology and stuff. When you, when they open those tombs in Egypt and stuff, they always tell the guys that are going in there, make sure you don't shave. Because I remember watching Geraldo going into King Tut's tomb or something back in the day, and the archaeologist he's with. Is like, did you fucking shave? <laughs> he didn't say it like that, but Geraldo had shaved his ridiculous Geraldo mustache. And he's like, well, I kind of did. He's like, well, you're going to fucking die if you go in here now. Because people would shave. That's where the King Tut's curse or whatever it was came from. It was because the archaeologists would go in and they'd shave before, so their pores would be open. And when they'd open these uh, like thousands of years old tombs, all that bacteria has nowhere to go. So it goes right into your pores and just fucking kills the shit out of you. That's where a lot of these Egyptian curses were coming from, from archaeologists back in the day. It makes a lot of sense, actually. So hypothetically, these kids, yeah, hypothetically these kids had flushed their systems, 
And what I think is, because you mentioned the baptism thing, is when the kid, that's like the correlating event for when the boy died. Yeah. Maybe he drank the baptismal water. And you know, back then, water wasn't very sanitary. Well, that's why they drank beer and stuff like that. Well, yeah, that's exactly. Only, it, was, absolutely. It, was, absolutely. it was the only yeah. thing filtered and properly, like it was boiled and that, everything like that. Well, yeah. like, if you look at early America, the main things that people would drink were rum and hard cider. Alcoholic cider, because alcohol kills bacteria and it's safe and sterile. And you can fucking drink it. If you look at how how many pe- how much rum was drank back in the day, like the reason America, part of the reason America is a country today with the Constitution, and we left, you know, England. This is going in a direction. Well, no, this is a historical thing, but it's part of the point, though, was because of the sugar tax on rum. They almost went to revolt over that before the tax act, tax act, because it was so necessary to make rum out of that sugar, so they could actually have something to. To drink. Yeah, they would have died of Because the water wasn't, it wasn't easy to find, and find a good water source in the middle of town. You'd have to go to a nice running river, which you can still do to this day. You can go to certain rivers and drink the water, oh, as long right. as it's running clear. Like, not not a lot of them locally, because yeah. there's a lot of mud and... and I'm pretty sure Smith River you can actually drink out of the water yeah, of Smith River. Yeah, because, well, the difference is between, like, so we live in an area where it's a, the Six River area in Northern California, but all the rivers here are basically coming down from mountains with a lot of mud mm-hmm. and a lot of debris, where Smith River comes off of granite mountains. Right. So it's being purified over the rocks. Well, if you're drinking from a baptismal... In, in an old village in England back in the 1800s, there's a good chance there's going to be bad bacteria in there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So alcohol has saved so many lives because of this. In fact, Actually, I was monks was, are the reason we have beer. To be to be honest, I think it's it's a little more like... I, I, I'm not about to get into politics or anything like that, but I think it was, it was kind of a thing where uh, girls weren't considered to eat as much, and they didn't eat as heavy food back then. And so I think what it was was the boy was given more food. So he was probably overfed because they needed to make him big and strong. So they thought, okay, well, we're going to feed him. And they basically overfed him something he couldn't but have. So the idea is this person... And essentially... Been, but we're agreeing on the point that yeah. these kids existed. They probably lived in a culture, that the, their village or whatever, probably like a culture or subterranean, far removed from people. It's probably yeah. been absorbed by now. They're probably still there. Oh, sure, probably, I mean, if we could do DNA tests, we'd probably still find people, if this is real, that are related to them that did absorb into the culture. And that, yeah. that, you know, basically they changed their diet so dramatically, and back then even meat wasn't that... We didn't know enough to cook out all the shit. You know, like, to, oh, no, 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 to, no. for pork to be safe to eat, you basically have to burn it because of the bacteria. Essentially. Yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. And absolutely. as much as we eat bacon in America, it's a frightening aspect. And I'm in no way a vegetarian. I love vegetables. But the same thing can be said of, like, um, Brussels sprouts. They contain a ton of worms. I love Brussels sprouts. But you have to boil the fuck out of them for them to be safe <laughs> to eat because you could actually get full of the same kind of worms that you would eat if you ate pork. Hmm. You know, and it goes to, like, parasites and stuff. So maybe these green kids, there's a scientific thing behind it. Well, you know, I think the, I think the thing we can kind of consensus on here is the fact that they essentially died from going into a culture that didn't understand, you know, basic digestion. And the fact that they only eat one thing, and then they got them to start eating other available. things, yeah. and then they started, like, basically overfeeding them things, or the boy at least got overfed more than likely because they were trying to bulk him up. And because they thought he was unhealthy, they overfed him more than likely instead of her because obviously they figured she was smaller. That's natural. She was probably healthy to them. Whereas the boy being smaller and, you know, only eating bean pods, he's not going to have muscle mass. And so they probably thought, let's bulk him up. Let's just fill him full of red meat. Well, dude, I'll tell you right now, I know a bunch of MMA guys that are vegetarians and vegans because they think it's the best way to go. So you tell them that they're weak and, and skinny. (laughs) <laughs> well, the rest of the as far as I know, because I could be wrong, correct me on this, but I don't believe people that are vegan for long periods of time or lifelong have the same muscle or bone density as someone who would eat meat, red meat. Well, it depends on if they get certain proteins and calcium. So it depends on what they're eating. But if you're living solely off green beans and pod plants, I'm guessing you're probably not getting enough nutrients well, that's for your body to build. This. No, no, that's what I, I, I'm agreeing with you. I think that, that that's probably a legitimate thing. And... Guys, this podcast is insane. I think. I think we're going into places that are uncharted. Well, this is this. Is, we're, we're we're thinking about something now. We're we're thinking a little deeper than just the story itself. We're going into the story. And the thing is, is like I said, I think that you know, it's you, you talk about the MMA fighters. The thing is, is, they they have we have supplements that they they remove things yeah. and they create yeah. outside supplements that they're able to get. And we also I have imagine a if they weren't how your body works too. Well, yeah. We know we need proteins. We know but we I need imagine. certain carbohydrates. We need certain sugars. We need all the stuff to actually be effective. 
But I did like Michael Phelps. That guy, he's skinny as fuck, but he eats so many carbs a day. Of course, because he burns it. Because he burns so much off. Here's the thing. Here's what I'm gonna say: is this is is the even if you ask those guys, those bodybuilders, those MMA fighters who are vegan, they would not be as big or as bulky if they didn't take vitamins because they wouldn't get what they needed to grow. Their muscles wouldn't be as strong. They wouldn't be as, in my opinion, held together. Well, yeah, because like when you go to the gym, like because I, I like to work out. And like I said, I studied martial arts a long time. You learn that your body burns off certain things. You start burning off protein too early, and you stop gaining muscle. You start, you know. Yeah. But what you want to do is pump up with certain carbohydrates, so you burn that off first, and then you work on the protein so it goes to the muscle, so you can actually bulk up a little bit. Absolutely, absolutely. And as for the the thing about them eating too much chlorophyll, I can totally see someone turning a color because of something they drink. Or eat, you know what all I mean? of this is plausible. Like all yeah. of this could. Like, yeah, this story might be the most like easily to accept. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, because because well, we, we know there's subterranean people. people. We know there were subterranean people cultures. That there probably still are. Yeah, and and we didn't even know where the fuck they were. A lot of them. We, we know. Like, we do know well, for a fact. Random, all of a sudden. We do know for a fact. And I don't mean this to be disparaging or mean. We know that people still in the Middle East do tend to live in caves in certain areas. Probably do well, massive caverns. Probably do to like political, social, political situation and climates and warfare. But we know it still happens. Well, actually, I was going to say it's probably just easier for them. They're probably already built. They don't have to rebuild out well, there in the dunes or out in the, the harsh weather. It's 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 pre like because living in a cave, you're going to be protected from the weather. You don't have to build houses over and over again. You have a pre-built location. Well, you have shelter. You have shelter. Yeah, you have shelter there. from it's like simple, horrible it's storms. Easy. Well, that's the thing. It's shel- it's simple. It's easy. Like I've stayed in a cave before. When I was hiking out in the woods, it's not bad. No, it's it's not comfortable, but it's not bad. I mean, people have done this forever. We basically Absolutely. build little caves out of wood that we live in. Yeah, you know, our houses are basically caves. They can definitely make these places livable and, and comfortable. Think so. about think about the connotation of cave too. This is the man cave studio. You yeah. know what I mean? So even that has become more prominent. The man cave, a place where a guy can go and be secluded from people, but still sheltered and do whatever the fuck he wants to do. Yeah. So there's like a, an archetype there that I think is built into us where we we like shelter. The first rule of survival is to find shelter. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. You know? Because you, you can't do anything if you're not sheltered when shit hits well, the Well, you protect like, you yourself from the elements. The yeah. first thing is shelter. The second thing is water. Because you can go for quite a while without food. Yeah. But you need shelter and you need water. You know? Yeah. And, and caves, a good source of water sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, even purified water sometimes. And they have fungi on the side sometimes that you can Yeah, you can you eat can some cook. certain fungus if you cook it. You can eat, Okay, so you can eat human feces if you cook it properly. Yeah. You know, and I, I'm not suggesting we do that, guys. If you want to do an episode where you can we tell us... We just went from green kids of wool pits <laughs> to, to living in caves. Tom wool pits. So if you, guys, if, you guys have good, <laughs> if you guys have good survival recipes for feces, please email them <laughs> to vanishinggates at gmail.com and our E Jack. <laughs> that's not, not, damn it. That's with two G's. <laughs> yeah, not Jack, but Vanishing Gates. Vanishing Gates. But yeah, I mean, I think I think the the most plausible story I've heard so far of the of the cryptids things I've read about that one about the Greeks the most kids belie- is the easily most easily because you can almost prove every point of that situation. Yeah, oh, I absolutely. mean, it's, it's pretty much like we. This is all things that we know that can be totally legit. So yeah. that's a really that's why you brought the story up. Now I understand kind of why you were pushing it so hard. It, that makes a lot of sense. At the same time, I know there's kids that are that show up from the wild in villages too, and still even currently there's people that talk about being raped, like the Jungle Book, Mowgli. That's a story that's true. Like someone, like the, the movie itself is, and I'm sure Baloo the bear wasn't saying bear necessities to him. He might have been. Don't, he don't, may have don't been. judge the bear. Can't judge the bear. He was also in Robin Hood as Little John. It's true. So. It's true. We're enough. <laughs> We're Disneying right now. <laughs> Let's bring it back. So what I was trying control. to say is that uh, we do know that there have been kids found in the wild for some reason. Either abandoned, but raised by wild animals that take on characteristics of wild animals. Yeah. And it's not just one occasion, it's multiple occasions. Mm-hmm. So it might be the same thing, but these kids, it might be like the black-eyed kids. They were living in a cave, and they're hybrids. They're aliens. <laughs> and they escape their men in black they're aliens. supervisors. They're that's not from, hybrids, they're that's aliens. from a previous episode, guys. If you're not listening, shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> You'd know the joke if you go back and listen to our back catalog of episodes. So uh, yeah, I don't know. What do you think, Seth? Like, eh? yeah. I mean, the, when it comes to the green children, I mean, I bear, I find it very plausible. You know, I mean, there's so many cases around the world today that where people turn certain colors because of the things that they digest. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it is, uh, it, it's very Lots possible. of carrots in New Jersey. Absolutely. Lots of waste. More <laughs> landfills per capita than anywhere. In and if, if New Jersey's anything like the Jersey Shore, I mean, all of them are clearly orange. <laughs> I don't know, no, you know, that, that can't be true, because I know a couple dudes from Jersey, and none of them are orange. 
Yeah. I know one that even lived right by the Jersey Shore where that show was filmed. Get out of here. You didn't know anybody. You didn't know him too. You didn't know anybody. I, I think it's still okay to make fun of people from New Jersey. I don't think we have to reset this podcast for that one. No. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Oh, if Chris you're from Christy. New Jersey, we don't think you're an orange Cheeto person. And if you're not, please send us pictures, especially if you have double Ds. and look. Really for the love of fun. God, man, you're married. So? Hold it in. I'm not going to fuck them. They're from New Jersey. Well, I'm yeah. big, but I'm not that big. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're from New Jersey and you oh want to have a long-distance affair, wink, wink, nudge, <laughs> nudge, that's not even physically possible, Jack. <laughs> no, Stop guy's... hitting on our freaking viewers at this point. I was thinking for Seth here, man. You can hey. use some Jersey poon. Hey, why not? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> And you guys thought we had Jack to is about to put a moratorium on alcohol during the show. Jack doesn't get to choose. Jack's not the executive host. <laughs> <laughs> Jack's the editor. Doesn't matter. All right, so we talked about green kids. Now, again, I'm going to say that's probably the most plausible thing we've talked about, like in, in easily acceptable ideas with the story and everything. It's totally believable. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I think, especially with what we need today about your, your dietary system and, again, skin pigmentation. Yeah. Totally, yeah. totally believe that. If you one. put all that in there, it's easy enough to just say, yeah, this, this would be fact in my opinion. This would, this, I don't think yep. it's a, I don't think it's a nice I think story. it's I think easy it's to accept. I don't think it's hard to, I don't think it's easy to disprove at all. I think it's really easy to accept. Yeah, because I, here's the fact. This girl said she was from St. Martin's Land. The thing is, is, she could literally have just been from fucking anywhere and yeah, not had a language we because her family abandoned her. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's the kind of thing is what what she learned in English, she gave it a title of things that she was used to. Yeah. I would like to know more too. I, I wish it was like a Wait, what was her brother's name? I, I don't think they had they didn't, I have don't names think they they didn't give names that we could find. If you guys yeah. know more about this and if there's more resources, please let us know because I really want to know more about the story because I think that this is probably something we could viably accept and prove. Oh yeah, Absolutely. this is definitely like this is definitely my opinion the most easily proven one because everything has a point of, of, of reference. Everything goes straight back to the one thing. You can prove everything that happened in the story. Or we can accept it. Anyway. I well, I mean, you can prove it. Sorry, yeah, you can accept everything as With a, as what a, we as know a, today, as a we can totally accept the entire story. Because it has nothing to do with aliens. It has nothing to do with cryptids. It's just a story of a potentially of two well, kids wandering in. have to do with aliens. And it was just, it's just a weird story of two kids that have, did they have black in. eyes? No. Oh, no. But they did eat peas. Yes. Eat lots of peas. So they're from Germany? They were full of, <laughs> they were definitely full of penis. Oh God, I said Germany, you said full of penis. <laughs> Not all Germans are full of penis. Peas, they were full of peas, so they were full of, you know, no, that's they're you're not going to make that jump yes. work. And, so. Oh, God, Jesus, balls. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, Fuck all. you, all the shit I've said, I've been better off so far. All right, so the next thing we wanted to talk about, because we're going to go to the next segment here, is satyrs in North America? Like how I did that with the AKA oh. Goatman. Goatman, the Grunches, the Pope Lick Monster, and the Maryland Goatman. I wish a, a monster would lick this Pope. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Point blank range. Oh, God. I don't even know where to go from that. You AKA, just my penis is nicknamed the Pope, so that's okay. It wears a little hat sometimes. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of our show. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> this Please is Fantasy drive Gates. home. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to the last episode of Fantasy Gates. <laughs> Come on, Jack. You're not even drinking. You can put a moratorium on alcohol and then say shit like, my dick is the Pope. And I, want, I want a monster to lick it. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. I wasn't paying. If you guys want to send us shit. fan oh, art, <laughs> <laughs> don't. <laughs> Let's oh. really pop. But if you do, R E Jason at Vanishing Gates. At do not email. send Jay no. any. We'll just forward it to Seth here because <laughs> yeah, on the show again. <laughs> All right, so no, we're gonna keep going. You're not gonna edit that out. This is hilarious. <laughs> and if you guys don't think so, well, I don't fucking care. So <laughs> you're still listening. Nobody so Pope Lick monster lives under or around the Pope Lick trestle on the above the Pope Lick fucking creek in Kentucky. It's what a lot part of Pope Lick? <laughs> yeah. Was there any fried chicken in that? Louisville. Oh God, I hope there's fried chicken. Louisville. <laughs> Louisville. Oh, burnt ends. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, burnt ends. I want to go to Kentucky just for the whiskey. Oh, yeah, for sure. Moonshine. Apple pie moonshine. If you guys are from Kentucky and you have apple pie moonshine, <laughs> please email it. Email us. <laughs> <laughs> email 
Boss, and I'll give you the P.O. Box to send me some moonshine. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm pretty sure with technology as advanced as it is, you can't directly email me moonshine. <laughs> At vanishinggates and gmail.com. <laughs> Two so, anyway. Oh, lives on or under or around the Pope Lick Trestle. Over the Pope Lick Creek. I don't know if the trestle's actually called the Pope Lick Trestle. but it's I don't the, think it is. It's, well, it is now. It's over the Pope Lick Creek. Uh, Fisherville con- neighborhood of Louisville, Kentucky. So it's a pretty good, pretty big, su- pretty big area, I think. I think Louisville's kind of a good size. It's one yeah, of the bigger places know. in Kentucky. I'm not sure. sure. Guys, if we're wrong, I apologize. I've never been to I'm not, the great I, state I, I of I couldn't Kentucky. fucking find China on a map, so... I almost I thought you said Kentucky Fried China. <laughs> 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 I hope everybody else heard that, too. You're anyway. start pissing off the euthanasia, man. Come on. <laughs> No. They're not going to want to listen to our no, show anymore. No, stop. No, no Kevorkian jokes. You're going to Kevorkian this fucking episode. No. <laughs> Again. Hypnosis or voice mimicry is what he uses to get people hit by trains, it sounds like. Hmm. Like yeah, he, I mean, it, it, it's not possible. Like I said, if he's, if he's, if he's considered a goat man, then I, my theory is that he's a satyr. And satyrs are essentially just tricksters from Greek mythology. Well, tell us more about satyrs. They're tricksters from Greek. What the fuck do you want me to say exactly? <laughs> well, they got hooves, horns, and they look human. Well, was it so hard to describe a fucking satyr on this podcast? Did, did I just I just describe it to you? Yeah, just now. And I said, well, tell us more about satyrs. And you got all they, like, they usually they live, they, they live near like forests and I think bodies of water. And they're they're usually considered. I think I don't know if they're guardians or what. I like I don't know a large amount about satyrs, but the lore that I do know fits very close because they're tricksters. They like to mess with people, and so. When you see things that are like these giant monstrous creatures, they don't hurt anybody that knows. I've never heard of a goatman actually physically harming or attack. Like, well, like these motherfucker is. He's trying to get people killed by a train or jump off. Well, a I'm bridge. sure there and are. Malicious. Sometimes he even has a bloody axe. He attacks them. Well, with. hold on. I- I'm sure there sometimes are malicious. You know, there there there'll be malicious sprites and you know like satyrs out there. But I'm saying that the vast majority of these sightings are probably they're, they're usually near wooded areas. And they're usually just basically something screwing with you, like you making people... loud noises, walking around outside the door of your house, knocking on your door, mimicking voices. They're pl- near the forest, they stand on the edge of the forest and just kind of watch you. They're just there trying to creep you out and freak you out, because that's what these particular types of creatures do. These satyrs, they, they just they just want to freak you out. That's they, they, own, they, own they want to play trucks. pranks on you. This seems more like a campfire story to me. Uh, well, he's going about Greek mythology, but I, I was trying to bring it more to the common day, like... I wonder if people in Greece still fucking see satyrs in the woods. If satyrs existed, if satyrs existed and Goatman existed, then more than likely they are the same damn thing. I'm pretty sure they're just pranksters screwing with people, and I'm sure they do malicious things. Like I've heard stories of them ramming into people's houses for no reason. Well, that's funny. You should use the term ramming because one of the stories about the Goatman is that he fucked a goat. A guy fucked a goat and made a baby. That's really weird. Well, he rammed a, I'm he just rammed saying, a ram. <laughs> that's that that's not, no. I think rams are actually sheep, but they're goats. <laughs> yes, I'm pretty sure that's right. I'm pretty sure goats are usually hanging out around mountains. There are different stories that water. these things are also, they, they don't go far from the location they were at. And that's that's a common thing that I believe about Sanders, too. They're they don't go far from their forests. Well, see, that's where, I, that's the thing, like, maybe, but if you bring that back to territorial creatures, we can have to bring that back to another cryptid we talked about in, in, at length is Bigfoot, because... <laughs> I think if Bigfoot's real, they travel over a large area of land. Well, they could. Because think about how much of America has not been... Like, guys, North America, there are places where humans almost never go. And it's big, huge swatches of land that are totally uninhabited by people. Yeah, we, we, we hardly ever go out there. So hypothetically, these creatures, Goatman or Bigfoot, could travel from South America to fucking Alaska and never see another person. Yeah, they could. It, it's not it's So possible. if they are migratory... Now, I, the thing is, though, you're talking about, like, territorial. And uh, the question is, are they territorial or are they migratory? Now, with the Pope Lick Monster... Sanders, they're, they're territorial. Okay, well, with the Pope Lick Monster especially, he's very territorial. He lives at that trestle or around that well, trestle. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's near a river. It's a near body of water. Well, th- that's it's not a the only place that has a story of Goatman, either. Maryland has a Goatman. Yeah, but the, the story... The Maryland one is a scientist basically mixed himself with a goat... And started killing people with a fucking hatchet. Well, he also Come might. On. He also might have rammed a ram. <laughs> Come on, ram a ram. I, I'm literally giving. I'm giving you mythology. It's only a bad, bad band name like <laughs> Duran Duran. <laughs> Just ram a ram. <laughs> ram a lamb. I am giving you. I'm giving Fuck. you mythology from thousands of years ago. Jerry a had a little ago. lamb. <laughs> you know, thousands of years ago, stories that existed that match stories today that people just don't realize match. 
Well, I think people realize they match. I think the difference is you don't hear about Goatman playing a little flute made of reeds. No, but the times change. And I think I imagine that nowadays people aren't as accepting and it would be accepting. Because back then people were a little more accepting, I guess, of, of things that they saw. Well, I'm going to say, like... Because they didn't really have a fucking choice, Here's, I here's my, my point here with, the, with your thing about the satyrs. There is this little-known author that almost no one has ever read, um, and he wrote about satyrs, and his name was William Shakespeare. <laughs> and because uh, no one has ever heard of that, who the fuck is that? Exactly, I have no clue. Who Come on, guys. Okay, hold Everyone's up. heard about the satyrs. Point is, is he the one that is? Is he the one that did the mist? I think that was uh, William Shakespeare King. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just want to make sure. Oh, <laughs> but the point is that I'm saying is, is that satyrs and the goat man, the way they react, I, I think would be very similar. I think that it's because well, I've heard, like I said, I've heard them chasing cars out of areas and ramming into the car. I've heard of things like that. There's a lot of ramming going on, Goat Man. This is a pretty phallic creature we're talking about here. My God, man. <laughs> you are in a gutter like 24 hours a day. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a guy. Yeah. Uh, Oi. And? Yeah. Uh, at least you didn't I say Oink Fay this time. Dude! <laughs> <laughs> I never said that. I will refuse to accept that that was a thing I stated once upon a time. Okay. Anyhow, so episode. another thing I've noticed... A lot of these stories like Goatman, and they, there's a counterpart in more of like the, the Cajun areas of the Grunches, and they're little Goatmen too, and they will follow people to like lovers lanes and like make out point, they'll just chuck rocks at cars and stuff and basically be just fucking cock blocks. That's rude. That's not a game, you fucking horn-headed, hooven-toed bastards. You know how hard it is to get a chick to go to some secluded place and fuck her in your car? You're a dick, Goatman. You're a dick. It's just rude. It's an asshole. Fuck, you're that guy when you're at the bar and your buddy's about to score some hot Betty, and he's like, hey, man, how's the AIDS? <laughs> you're that guy, goat man. You're that guy. Because you're, you're taking a chick to the most, like, insecure place and trying to get her to feel secure enough to take off her pants, and the next thing you know is there's some creature pounding on the fucking car. It's not a good way to get the, the downstairs action going on. It probably I would have to agree with that statement. I, I would yeah. say if I saw a goat man out there, I'd be like, I'll I, warn later. I would kick his fucking ass. I'd be like, I'll warn later, don't worry about I it. I would get out of the car and be like, come at me, goat man! Come at me! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> They're supposedly very strong, though. I don't give a fuck! If I'm in that mood and I'm getting cock blocked, I am stronger than goat man at that point. My, my testosterone's up, my rage is up. Dude, if a nine-year-old girl can lift a car off her dad because of stress and the heat of the moment, I can take out a goat man because I'm trying to get laid. He has a valid point. It's a valid point. I just, I, I don't know about that. It's true. It's a fact. I'm Scientific so fact. Not sure about the that. The human body is amazing. My human body is amazing. <laughs> Your, yours is there. <laughs> You're not my type, go man. <laughs> no, see, he's angry because he has that Billy Goat beard. <laughs> We're just pissing off Jack this episode. You're an asshat. I am kind of a jerk. All right, so now there are stories, though, that he jumps on cars. Uh, he might have been an escape circus freak. The public monster? Yeah, the public monster. Yeah. That there's actually a story that on that trestle, uh, a circus train had gone through and crashed, and he escaped from there. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that, that he dwells there to this day, which is, I don't know how long ago this story started, but it sounds like he'd be pretty old if he was really there. Absolutely. Well, I know that they, they, like, the town got pissed because uh, the guy, this guy wrote a, uh, or made a movie about it or something like that. And they were like, you're going to encourage kids to go on to this thing that kills them. What the fuck well, are you doing? Thing, yeah, people don't realize this train trestle is still heavily used by car freight trains. You can get trapped up there because there's fences on it. Yeah, you you're can not getting get the fuck off. You're killed by the fucking train. Because they, they, they fenced it off because people were jumping off the fucking thing. Yeah, and so now basically you get up there, you're trapped, the train comes, you're probably dead. And that's part of the story is that he would convince you to jump off the trestle, but what's happening, I think, is you're going up there hearing the story and a train's coming at you all of a sudden. Of course you're going to fucking jump. Of course. Yeah. What the fuck are you... I'm Your not, first instinct is... Fuck this. What are the options? I get hit by this fucking million pound fucking missile coming at me, or I could jump and hope for the best. Right. I'm going to jump and hope for the best. Well, I'd probably just hang down. Yeah, that's actually probably what i do. Well, also, though, if you're hanging <laughs> down... Well, think about it. If you're hanging there, though, that train's coming over there. If it's a long enough train, the vibrations are enough to make your hands Yeah, could, Absolutely. Yeah, could so, could yeah, I, just, I, I don't know how tall this trestle is. We probably should have looked that up. It might not be suicide tall, but... If it is, then... It must be if people are dying jumping Well, hypothetically, it. you can die falling off a fucking sidewalk curb and hit your head, right? 
That's true. So, so, the truth. so and, if really and if you're already there. scared and under duress, if you convince yourself something's going to happen, and then this train comes out of nowhere, it's part of the herb, the legend already, yeah. the mythology. You know, which is probably the yeah. explanation is it's probably not a goat man at all, but someone regurgitated this bullshit tale. They fence off the thing because people were jumping, but they're still going up there to look for this fucking thing and get hit by trains. Yeah, I mean, I imagine it's the train that's doing most of the problem there. That's that's the biggest issue. And then you know, the, the, that's you know how many how many different areas that are just dangerous in and of themselves. Become more dangerous because people are going there more and more oh, oh, that's because a good of point. legends. That's a good point because if you think about it, most of these creepy legends are based off of scary, bad places to go. Yeah. Well, c- to keep you away from it. Well, like like tunnels and stuff. That people will go under sewer tunnels and stuff and go deep. And be, oh, I hear voices. The thing is, you don't know where that thing ends. It could come out somewhere else, and someone could be like, it could just be on like a a, a public area, and it could be a sewer drain coming, coming down, down. Into the tunnel, yeah, yeah, and you right. could be hearing people talk up top without knowing. Well, it. look at the the devil's playground out behind the mall yeah. here in town. There's this place that used to be an old lumber camp, and there's a bunch of like psycho tweakers that were out there, zombies that live out there, and they attack people all the time, and they just it's a fucking it's, it's horror fucking situation, mortifying. Some great graffiti back there. You know, some ne'er do wells like to hang they out. They legitimately back there. had to basically gather an army of police officers to get the fucking place cleaned out. Recently. Well, that was further. That was further up, though. That oh, was a well. Was it? I'm talking. Yeah, that was right by, behind the warehouse. Oh, okay, okay. So, which is there's a tract of land behind where I work that connects all the way down. It's, it's a few miles long. So, this Devil's Playground, quote unquote, is this old abandoned mill that's been. It, it's like basically just the the relic of the mill left. There's not really a mill there anymore. It's just a big cement structures. Mm-hmm. And a lot, a lot of like really methed out. I mean, methamphetamines are a bad thing, guys. Yeah, I mean, if you're thinking about doing meth, um, fucking don't do hold meth. Hold on, let me, let me, let me, <laughs> let me put you like this. If if you're gonna do meth, be prepared for death because that's where you're gonna be going. That later rhymes. On. Meth yeah. and if death. you're gonna do meth, be prepared for death. You should be a spokesperson for meth. <laughs> Poor math, I should stop math. <laughs> maybe against math. None of us are proposing that math is a good No, it's reverse psychology. If you're going to do a drug, <laughs> if you're going to do something that's considered a drug, like, I'm going to I'm gonna encourage you to do something to kill yourself. You know what I mean? Whether you want to kill <laughs> yourself or not, you know, send you. out the herd. Exactly. <laughs> what, well, hold on. Look, if you know people who are useless, send them out with meth, but if you're a viewer of ours, please don't because we need you. Hey, man, what if they're listening to us and they're meth addicts? We don't want to alienate these people. Well, maybe they're just unfortunate and they have a bad situation. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. Don't be an asshole. Don't die. Twat waffle. Try not to die as long as you stuff to us. Yeah. The point Subscribe is, first. so the devil's place is <laughs> <laughs> auto Make it auto, auto, auto clicker so yes. that it auto yeah. every time. Sure, and make sure you visit the website, as, uh, the, the Facebook site. And automatically yeah. likes as well, please. Oh, man. I'll tell you what. So where I was going with this devil's playground thing, it's just big abandoned structures that are made of cement. And there's a ton of mortifying stories from people disappearing, being linked to that, to well, attacks, to even evil entities and crazy things. Satanic rituals are told to be back there. And again, this is a, a point of local urban lore. Because this place is overgrown with woods, and there's a lot of bad things uh, going this on is, back this there. Is, this is lore that comes from our lifetime, not yeah, like yeah, recent, no, not absolutely. fucking ancient lore. This yeah, is like, no, we this know is recent this lore. Shit. There, there's actually, there was a gate back there that's actually by the park over here. That was at a site of a, a violent um, uh, protest or something during the lumber mill. There was like yeah. five people died there. They just moved it from there to there, shut that place down or whatever. Well, this is also in a marshy area, and it's <clears> right <throat> off the bay. And there is just some, it's just a, a, a crazy, one day we'll have to go through and take pictures for you guys. Because I don't mind going back there. I'm not exactly a small fella. I'm not bring exactly a small army it. with us. Yeah, we'll, we'll bring a, a, a bunch of goat A contingent with us. of people. But this place is a dangerous place to go. It's very, very dangerous because of the human element. And also, because you could fall, there's crumbling structure. It's just not a safe place to go altogether. But there's so much lore built around it because of that. But that's what draws people to fucking go there. It's like, uh, you, you call it Devil's Playground. That's a recent thing. We never called that, we never called it that growing up. It was the ruins behind the mall we talked about. Yeah, never called just... it, that's some recent tagline some reporter did locally, and it's been spreading like wildfire because of all the shits going on with our, our local zombies, because we do have a zombie population. If you don't believe in zombies, dude, you need to come to, to Northern California, hang out in Humboldt County, hang out in Eureka. That's that's the place to hang out if you want to see real fucking yeah, zombies. Yeah, there's some fucking people all wet, just totally out of their fucking head. Oh, absolutely. Drugs are bad, yeah, guys. It's, it's fucking okay. bad here. Okay. 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 okay, we can't get sued, guys. <laughs> okay. Can't afford to get sued over a free podcast. <laughs> 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 I, I can already see in this, what, six episodes we've done so far, we're getting fucked. 
Yeah, so uh, let's try not to get sued too much, guys. I got yeah, before all this shit. Probably not. So, uh, anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you think about it, like the, that, that bridge, that trestle, it's a very unsafe place to be. Yeah, so just people of warn you. It's like you hear stories about don't go into the woods because there's bad things in the woods. People and, and want kids to go are, there. Well, but the thing is, when you're a kid, you're not supposed to go there. Your parents think it's going to scare you off from going there. What's the first thing you do when you have a chance to explore? You go. Go right to the place they told you, you not to. It's part of who we are. Absolutely. We like to face our fears, I think. Like, you've always been told, you got to face your fears. And then your fucking stupid parents who just said, face your fears, say, hey, don't go into the ocean because of sharks, which are a way bigger threat than any goat man ever. Sharks aren't that big of a threat. Fuck that. Sharks are a huge threat. <laughs> How often? How people, big do you they, think sharks are? They've been, they've been proven to be real sharks. as well. We, we know sharks exist. <laughs> <laughs> They're only theoretical. Okay. Okay. There's, the whole reason I don't surf anymore is because I jumped, hopped off my board in waist deep water and stepped on a fucking shark. Fucking sharks are real. I've never seen a goat. No man. wonder you don't like sharks. Fuck no, I don't like them. They, I, they make good jerky. They taste good. What happened to the shark that you stepped at? Wait, that's a different story. The shark that I stepped I just hopped off the board and stepped... There was a shark there. I didn't see it. Hopped off the board in the murky-ass water. Hit its back. It went. I realized what it was. I went, like, kind of sideways because it was the ground I was standing on. And it was, little, <laughs> and it was not a small shark. I mean, the shark was just a mud shark. Right. And they don't normally attack people at all, but unless you put your hand in their mouth. And most sharks don't attack people, usually. Yeah. I mean, even great whites don't particularly like us, but some douchebag was filming a documentary and used a surfboard to emulate a seal, so now surfers get attacked. Right. Well, I'm, I'm not even in deep enough in sh deep enough water for a great white to attack me. Yeah. But still, it doesn't matter, because I stepped in this fucking thing, and I got to see what it was, and it came up and up where I saw its fin. I got back on the board, and kind of held my body up tight, and used my hands to paddle back to shore as fast as I could. <laughs> and I never fucking surfed again. <laughs> Fuck that. That shark was bigger than me. You're like, I quit. Dude, okay. Right now, I was smaller than Right now, I'm six foot three, and I weigh about 210, 215 pounds, somewhere in there. I haven't gotten a scale recently. But that shark, if that shark weighed, or was as long as me, that shark outweighs me by a lot. Yeah. If that yeah. shark is a six foot <laughs> shark, that shark still outweighs me by a ton, and it's in its natural environment, and I'm not. No. I, no, I don't no, subscribe no. to the aquatic ape theory. I'm not an aquatic ape. I, I love the water. I love the water a lot. I, I can't not be around water. I love to swim. I love to be in the water. But if I was trying to live in the water, I would drown because I don't have gills. Right. Anyway, it's Del Playground. Well, that's part of the thing is you tell people, you know, stay out of this, stay out of that, to try to keep them out of it. And you tell people all the time, like, don't go there, and kids are like, well, you just told me to face my fears, so I'm going to go look at it. Yeah. And that's exactly the first time when I, I was younger. I was probably, you before know, I was in high school, I went and checked as out. As an individual, that's, you know, I would say that that's not quite true as an individual child, but what happens is you get groups I of kids that did. go, nope, that, that basically brave each other up. They're like, huh, you're stupid. Half of them are, they're all afraid of doing this well, thing. Just ball but they're each other goading each other go. into doing something Cause, stupid. Because it's part of the things, well, our parents lied to us about Santa Claus. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, by the time you start doing that, it's because you figured all these things your parents told you were a load of horse shit. And you're thinking, man, I could just do this. That, you know, it's and, and that's essentially what it is. Is these kids they they brave themselves up. And that's that's another thing. Like me individually, I was told don't go back there because these evil things happen back there. There's evil satanic rituals. And back when I was a kid, for some reason, everything had a satanic ritual there. Everything was a satanic ritual there, guys. They did some satanic rituals. Don't go into that house. Mommy, mommy, I want to go to Burger King. Yeah, whatever. there's satanic rituals. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we were a McDonald's family when I was a kid, not a BK family. But, uh, no, so I would go back there, and I was pretty young. This was before I was in high school. I'd go back there and explore, and I'd run into weird people, and I'd climb around on the structures. I wasn't scared, but, I mean, a part of me was, but I was ignoring it and trying to face my fears. And also, it's the unknown, which is one of the reasons we do this podcast. Naturally. Is because we're interested in this horrifyingly terrifying shit. But that's what I was talking about. we want to hear and talk about it. Well, that's what I'm talking about with the trestle, though. That's, you know, we, it all comes back to that. It comes back to the idea of the trestle. Is the trestle, in and of itself, was dangerous. It's a, it's a dangerous, that's the point fucking I stupid place to go, no matter what. Right. And then you think to yourself, okay, we're going to we're gonna climb this trestle, and then we're going to hear this horrible monster. And then... What? Well, that's yeah, exactly. Think about it. There's, a, there's what? A really, that's an important thing to think about too. What we're what we're saying here is, look at all the ghost hunters and stuff that go out and they go, "Oh, my house is haunted." We'll we'll be right there with cameras. 
<laughs> you know, people get scratched and they die. On the way. <laughs> be right there. We're going to film this shit. You know, People like, committed suicide because this thing whispers in their ear. I will be right over with the camera and four other suicide Okay, victims. we talked about... We, <laughs> we briefly on a doll episode, we talked about Peggy the doll for a second. The doll that when you watch it or hear about it or get close to it, you can actually have heart attacks and die and get sick from it. Yeah, why would you do and that? Zach fucking Baggins bought the doll... Because of it! And put it in his scary museum! And it's just like fucking, um, like I was talking about with the Ouija boards. Exactly! Playing fucking Russian roulette with a, with a fucking auto, a semi-automatic <laughs> missile. <laughs> There's no good outcome that comes from this shit. You know, the, the, it, it, You go first. The only thing <laughs> <laughs> it's fully loaded. No, don't worry. Hey, honestly, suicide is not cool. I left a single bullet out of the chamber of the, of the semi. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you forgot to rack the mag. Oh, God. You know, suicide isn't fun. And suicide is, is not painless. I don't care what MASH says. Let me explain to people. Suicide is not funny. It's not a good thing. People have legitimate issues. You don't need to go stand on top of giant fucking trestles looking for evil ass goat monsters that'll convince you to jump the fuck off. Yeah. No, so true. Real. So true. I, I usually don't go looking for goat monsters. There's plenty where we live. Yes. Yes. I know a couple bars I hang out at. Yes. <laughs> uh-huh. I've seen some at my gym. Some cougars, scary shit around here. Cougars aren't scary. Cougars, cougars don't just wonderful. don't just live in the woods here. They live in oh, the bars. Oh, oh, I thought you were talking about <laughs> yeah the bar cougars. Wood cougars, watch out for. Bar cougars can be really fun. Bar cougars are more lethal than wood cougars, in my opinion. They'll suck the life right out of you. Yeah, you they right. sure will. Find the right one. They my will, God, they will swallow that essence. No, <laughs> they will swallow it whole. That may be the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> oh God. God, Jack has just turned into a red child. <laughs> His pigmentation has changed. <laughs> this, this, podcast, this podcast is only going to be viewed by degenerates. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, don't don't even say degenerate. You can't say that anymore. Yeah, we can't. It's not. It's, it's, not, it's not socially acceptable. Mm-hmm. Oh, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, guys. This is a politically correct podcast. We can't go offending people. <laughs> just because they have weak spines and they smell like turpentine and vomit. They got little hands. Vinegar and shame. Oh man! All no, right. I mean, you know, to sum this up, don't go looking for dangerous things in stupid, dangerous. If if someone tells you, oh, there's this really cool monster, right? In case if you if you go stand directly in the middle of Nevada, right outside where they test the nuclear bombs, don't worry if you hear a giant siren. There's a monster there that'll start talking to you. As soon as the siren now, starts. That is a good point. And that being said, um. Jack and I, and maybe Seth, if he's interested, are going to go hunt for Bigfoot before too long. We're going to go way deep into the woods. Out we are to not going to oh, look for Bigfoot. Yes, we are. I am not I a so deep person. We are, going, so we are going on a camping trip to Bluff Creek soon to go hunt for Bigfoot. You are a monster. This we are going to go to the really site of the Patterson Gimlin I want footage. at least five people because I need a gun to be able to shoot one person. I will have a gun. Do it during deer. Do it during deer. That's a really bad idea because then there's lots of guys with guns. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be on the receiving end of it. Well, I'd rather be, with, with I'd rather rather be legitimately at oh, an excuse my, oh, to be out there with it. With hey, we might even bag a Bigfoot. Hey, there you go. That'd be good. If I bag a That'd Bigfoot, you guys... Except for, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, is it really... I mean, do, when we go out looking for Bigfoot, I mean, do we really want to make the main priority hunting? No, 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 no. I don't want to hunt it. I want to I want to get evidence or nothing. Do we have any drones? Do we, we, can any? Take, we can get a drone. I have a drone. My son actually has a drone. Well, we have a, I have a drone. We, we get a, a camera drone. drone with yeah, that. yeah. He, yeah. Has, he, has, he has a camera yeah. drone. We can take a couple drones. We can get some GoPros. Some so GoPros. there's a plan in the works, guys, for a, a nice uh, big also, drones. And also, we're also going to check out the Devil's Playground that we just talked about at night. We're going to need a bunch of change. And we're going to be wearing really white clothes and have money tied around our necks. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to go diving for sharks. <laughs> No, but we'll do the Bigfoot thing now. <laughs> we're we're going to go into the wilderness to hunt Bigfoot, but we're not going into the hey, crazy we zombie do, land. We do have some old train tracks around here. We can probably find a... Uh, well, fish off a train trestle. Yeah, 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 well, none of the train tracks out here are in operation, know, though, it's unfortunate. Anyway, so... We could totally get hit by All right, train. guys. Well, th- I think this is about near the train end of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of train wreck, let's finish this up. All right, guys. Well, thanks for listening. And uh, email us with your stories, your thoughts, your opinions, your views, your hate for Jack at vanishinggates at gmail.com. That's two G's. I'm Jay. I'm Jack. And I'm Seth. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. See you later. Peace.